Welcome to Self Perfected. And there we go. Hey, what's up, everybody? Oh, got it. Hello, what's everybody. Up? Time for your weekly triggering. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> hey, I have a quote for you guys from Alexander Pope some writer, English writer. What the weak head with strongest bias rules is pride, the never failing vice of fools. Say that again. Yeah, yeah. What the weak head with strongest bias rules is pride, the never failing vice of fools. Mm. Ichab 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 Ichabod bias. Spencer stated that spiritual pride is the worst kind of pride. It is it, not the worst snare of the devil. Wow. Oh my God. Sounds like all the love and light people. Pride. Oh, shit. We just ended Pride Month, right? So now I'm allowed to talk about it. <laughs> hey, but hey, think about this. Because So the reason I brought it up is because Jordan Peterson got banned from Twitter, right? For basically saying that Ellen Page, calling the actress Ellen Page, Ellen Page, instead of her name at Elliot Page now, you know, because she's a boy. Because she cut her boobs off, right? Um, Ouch. And... Uh, and he had, and, and he had wrote just, just clarify yeah. that that's all you have to do to become a boy if you're not already a boy just cut your boobs off he was boy. like he wrote like you know she had her breast removed and he was like is that the offending sentence he was like how could i have written that any more clearly and got my point across he had his breasts removed were were the breasts the breasts of a male and if so, why were they removed? It's like, what, what the fuck? Like, it doesn't make any. So it's like, you can't even talk about it in a way that makes sense. Even though you're talking about the fact that she cut her breasts off, you can't make reference to the fact that she was a woman before. And that's why she's doing it. Even though that's why she's doing it. It's total fucking insane world. But the reason I brought it up is because he's, he also in that little tweet storm or whatever said, um, isn't, he said, what did he say, Drake? He said, um, wasn't pride like the worst sin? Wasn't it supposed to be yeah. like the worst sin or whatever? Exactly. And yeah. so, it's like so the, now you have the all the cardinal sin. The most cardinal sin. So now you have all the conservative people saying like, yeah, pride is a sin. Don't you know that? Don't you know pride is a sin? Right? And now I want to ask them, are you proud to be an American? <laughs> <laughs> oh! You know, there's that whole song, I'm proud to be an American. God. Which was written by a Canadian. No, what? was it? No way. Look it up. What? See, they I were guess trying, to get, they were trying to get everybody about being on, about pride from the beginning. Canada was infiltrating with their commie bullshit. Wow. <laughs> uh, Did he become so, yeah. an American and, and then he like passed his citizenship test and that's why he wrote the song? I think that was the set, that test. <laughs> As of, can he you just, confirm? He just wrote <laughs> the lyrics down. Test. <laughs> I'm nowhere close to being a citizen. Um, I'll ask Atlas. He's a citizen. <laughs> is he? Is he technically? That's I what it is. Uh, no. Social security I mean, number. I was like, look, we first mail for Atlas. Oh shit, dude! Atlas could be president. Yeah. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> exactly. That's <laughs> pretty awesome. Wow, that's cool. Nice. So, what's up? Looks like you've been having some late nights, Asif. Hmm. It's it, it yeah. He's like, huh? What was the question? <laughs> it it the re, what I was gonna say is it's not every night. It's just like infrequently, but yeah. when it flops, it flops. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's the way, that's the <laughs> it way feels good it. though. It feels good to just like still move forward with my day, kind of thing. You know, despite. Yeah. I well, one thing that stuck with me is when. Uh, Cameron, I must ask like a year ago or something. And I was asking you about the sleep point and you're like, you just get used to being tired. And right there, something clicked for me. I'm like, oh, I just need to stop trying to not be tired. Yeah. Be at my optimal, you know, and just be optimal despite being tired. Like be tired you, and still yeah. operate as highly as possible. Can you see how subconsciously all of that would prevent you from being an effective parent? Like all that programming around like, you know, you got to be fit and you got to be, you know, always like uh positive and like all this stuff it would prevent you from really even wanting to have kids or being effective because it's like you know you have to uh suppress all that stuff 
or mm -hmm. you have to just ignore your kids <laughs> and neglect yeah. them yeah everyone makes it seem like having kids is like a just this liability mm -hmm. basically for everything <laughs> now it's the yeah, whole like planet too right like they're gonna add uh carbon emissions to the planet and shit like that you know there was there was this thing i saw from aoc that congresswoman you know the crazy one and she she was saying something about something about abortion and so oh so oh that's what it was somebody said aoc i'm so glad your mom didn't abort you and she was like, yes. She was like, um, I'm really glad that my mom wasn't like forced to have a child against her will. And that, you know, I was um, some, something about, you know, it, there was something in her thing about, you know, being like not being an unwelcomed child or something like that, you know, and, and somebody was making this point about it. Like, look at the, look at the, the thought behind that of like, there's children that are unwelcome. Like, okay, we're not talking about the mother was raped or something, although obviously they're still unwelcoming of the child in that context, but okay, that's an extreme circumstance yeah. or the circumstance where it's like a young girl and she's really young or like, you know, whatever it is. It's like, imagine like you have ba basic financial security. I'm not gonna say stability, but security, you know what I mean? Like you have a good job and all that stuff. So you're making enough money. And then you're like, yeah, the child is just not welcome in my life. So you have this actual baby inside of you and then you're like, I'm just going to kill it. It's not welcoming. <laughs> you know, like the, the fucking like mental disease. And imagine that they, they're the ones that have that sign in their yard. That's like all are welcome here. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> they, they, they're they exactly the that same would probably people who would be argue. the person who has that sign. 100%. Yeah. The same people who would argue like, like you could kill a baby because they're not welcome and it's your body, but also we should have total open borders like we shouldn't have any rules about anything. Like we shouldn't have police or it's, it's, it makes no sense. And it's all just like some, you know what it is. I, I realize what it is now. It's not about logic. Cause I was gonna say, it's all just emotional because even if you were going based on emotions, those things wouldn't follow logically from your emotions, just your own natural emotions. So it's not like, oh, it's just women being emotional. It's not really, because even if you're emotional, you wouldn't, that wouldn't connect the dots to open borders because if you were being emotional, like, well, then what about the emotions of the child being killed? Like, it doesn't make sense. All it is, it's just people who are totally just the followers of the system. And the system is saying we want X, Y, and Z. And then they give you the rationalization and the person's like, yes, I support X, Y, and Z. That's all it is. They're literally just the agent Smiths. So now why would the system want that, right? For the average person now listening to this in this group, like why would the system want that? Because from, from my perspective, it's you got life and then you got the reverse of life, which is evil. And that's basically what the system is at its core, self-interest only. And so all of this that's playing out right now is a bunch of consequence that we've accumulated over all these years to basically get people so isolated from each other us forgetting about who we really are that we're just all in a little box afraid to go outside afraid to do anything except sit at home go into the metaverse and just basically have our energy be fed off of yeah that's pretty much we'll see you guys next week that's it all right <laughs> <laughs> have a good night <laughs> yeah yeah because it's interesting then, like yeah. when we talk about the system it's like uh it's like this entity. It is its own entity. But some people are like, well, who's the system or what is this? Like, how, how, that doesn't make sense. Like, because I even remember first hearing about when we talk about the system, it's like people almost give it more power than it deserves. Kind of like the whole idea of they. It's like they don't want you to know. It's like, who is they? <laughs> it really is the system. <laughs> well, now we know. Well, it's Elliot Page and Demi Lovato. <laughs> Harry Styles. Oh, I do remember that? that that song that Demi Lovato was it Demi Lovato song or yeah? What was Demi, I didn't watch it. I thought it was the one like, I sent y'all. The one I sent y'all. Yeah, 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 that one. And what it was, was all like, about like being depressed and like mental shit and like yeah, yeah. yeah. What was it oh, called? Man. I want to look I at don't the lyrics. Remember? Though. Yeah, look it, it up. was look it up. so I really bad. Because okay, in this, so apparently she like had a heroin addiction or something. Oh. She must have. I don't know because her music sucks, but it's like <laughs> wait, <geez>. wait, what? 
<laughs> you're like her music sucks therefore she had to have no 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 it was <laughs> it's it's, co- it's correlated it's not cause and effect it's both. okay okay gotcha. that's really funny it was a, it's a it's a self-reinforcing loop right? okay her brain you can tell her brain is not you know fully there but this was her point in this song she's like i like i just we should just find the lyric but it's like um Let me it's leave a disease rehab again was when it is this shit gonna end yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah what if what if i what if i did it like slam poetry <laughs> yeah yeah do it like slam poetry come on Asa. demi please rehab again <laughs> when is this shit gonna end sounds like the voice it in my head i can't believe i'm not dead i'm just gonna read it now okay I'm you alive. know what's really sad is that that was like slam poetry and the fact that you can literally just copy it it's like nothing original about it yeah anyways but th- this is like the system like, it, in it, the head and i like how, okay. I, I like how at the end you went like dead like that's great that was, that was really, just just that was really as to keep reading it but everyone just imagine you have a precious child that you brought in, a welcomed child that you brought into this world right now they're growing up they're learning about the world right like wow this is an amazing place i can do all these things and now they figure out about Demi Lovato, and this is what they're p- listening to every day, right? Imagine these words right here. That's it. Hey. Hit it. Alive by the skin of my teeth. I survived, but it got harder to breathe. Asking why doesn't make it easier. Therefore, don't ask why. Uh, go easier on me. God damn it. I just want to be free, but I can't because it's a fucking disease. I'm alive by the skin of my ooh woo hoo ooh woo <laughs> The Reaper knocks on my door because I'm addicted to more. I don't need you to keep score when I'm the one who's at war. I'm alive by the skin of my teeth. So chorus again. I'm just trying to keep my head above water. I'm your son and I'm your daughter. I'm your mother. I'm your father. I'm just a product of the problem. I'm just trying to keep my head above water, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, oh, chorus gets a little spicier here. I'm alive by the skin of my teeth, in bracket skin of my teeth. Uh, so there must be some sub sub vocals, you know, some co- choir yeah. in the back. Yeah. Uh, won't you try and have some mercy on me? Asking why doesn't make it easier. Go easier on me. God damn it, I just want to be free. Want to be free, but I can't because it's a fucking disease. I'm alive by the skin of my. Hey, yeah, ooh, 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 ooh. I'm alive by ooh, ooh, ooh. The skin of my teeth. Ooh. And I own nothing and I'm happy. Demetria. <laughs> and I'm your mother. I'm your child. I'm everyone around. But like you. she's speaking truth right now. Like that yeah. is like that's, that's in everybody. So about it. It's actually cool because she's she's showing everybody what is the actual underlying feeling that people her generation and lower have right now. People are relating to that. Well, yeah. Isn't that ridiculous? It's like she's she's basically the ultimate victim. And claiming that she's everybody, right? The mother, sister, brother, whatever. But she's like, I I shouldn't ask why. And it's a fucking disease. I can't do anything about it. Little does she know what disease actually is. The incorrect mm-hmm. programming of words into the flesh. Right? Where all that is life is not considered or realized. Someone got to get her a TT presentation. God damn. Yeah. But you see what I mean about how her like exposing what's actually, because it's like, a lot of what happens with the artists, these artists is that they're tapped into like how everyone is thinking and feeling. That's why they're popular. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because people relate to it. Mm-hmm. So you just consider all the people that are in the first world. And so you see even someone like that who has money, fame, all that stuff, access to pretty much whatever they want, still totally depressed. And then consider this. This is actually really cool because I just saw there was some documentary being promoted about her. Um, I think it was on YouTube or something. And it's like supposed to give like the real story of her, you know, and like it's like with her and her friends and it's kind of like she's just talking and then her friends are being interviewed and stuff like that. And now think about that. So in the background, I mean, I don't I never knew much about Demi Lovato, but so I don't know if you guys are were already aware of this or not, but it's like she's been super plagued with like mental illness, depression, drug addiction, all that stuff, which is not surprising because she's in that position, but it's like a big thing for her. Right. But then now this whole point with her being non-binary and they, them and all that, can you see how it's the attempt to try to re-identify with something to escape all that shit? Mm -hmm. It's like, if I identify with this, 
It's the same reason people play video games, isn't it? It's like, I feel, remember, I think you and I were talking about that, right, Mitch? Wasn't it like, we were, there was something about that, right? When you were here, mm-hmm. like that point of like using it as a way to escape from like something that you don't like, or you're feeling bad about or whatever, you can be like, oh, I could just escape into this, right? Mm-hmm. And so the whole non-binary trans, all that stuff, it's just a way to escape into it. And then look, what's the next logical step of that? Become a transhuman avatar I mean, in the metaverse and don't leave. I, I think there's a, probably people out there that feel like that's that's like a stretch or something. But to me, it's so obvious. Like, it's just the next stepping stone to get you to that next point of like, because like if you tried to get everybody straight from 1950s, the hot, wife staying at home, raising the kids, dad's at work to like next day. Hey, guys, we're going to get in the metaverse. They'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so it's like you got to start breaking those bonds down you start to get you got to start getting everybody to the point where they're just like they don't even place value on life anymore you know and like everything's about consumption i'll give another right. perspective on that like on identifying with something to escape something else because christina and i were just talking about this uh yesterday because we we just made a video on basically reviewing our relationship and in that video we were talking about like our past programming and stuff like that and um one thing that i remember for myself was like just how i would sabotage relationships and in doing that like the way that i was thinking about it was like i'm some sort of player i'm a ladies man all this sort of stuff right and in doing that it was so interesting because um what i was actually trying to do is I would sabotage the relationship. I would get out of the relationship. And in the back of my mind, not really consciously, but in the back of my mind, what I was thinking was, um, I need to get out of this relationship before she stops liking me. So I'm going to be the one to reject her before she rejects me. And uh, the mask that I had put over it to escape the fear of rejection. Like, so what was actually motivating my actions was, fear of rejection, but the mask that I had put over it that I identified with is I'm a player. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm a ladies man. Like I, this is, yeah, yeah. I, I can't be tied down for long. I got to go on to the next one, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and it's just like, I, I was not consciously aware of it. And so I know a lot of guys are also doing that. And it's the same thing with getting into video games. Like, no, I, I really love video games. Like, no, you're really trying to escape reality. I just yeah. identify with Mario and Luigi so much. <laughs> the way they hold each other's hands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like there, there's so many things that people identify with today. And there, like that's part of, you know, again, century of the self, where it's like you, there's all this illusion of choice. There's all these things that you can identify with that you can buy into essentially, so that something can be marketed to you. So that you're not looking at what the real problem is, which is you feel inadequate. You feel like you don't know what the fuck's going on. You're upset with your life. And that's why you need some, that's the only reason why you would reach out really to like buy a whole bunch of shit is because there is obviously something amiss in your life that you feel like a need to to fulfill or fill a void or or whatever you want to call it. Um, But that's like manufactured by us. I was just reading this Bernard article, Creation of Journey's Life, right? Bernard, Bernardical. Bernardical. It, it's like a barnacle, but a Bernardical. It's even better, right? Uh, and if you're not prepared and you touch it, you can cut yourself up. Anyway. Um, it's also reading, alive. <laughs> it's also alive. <laughs> um, but I was reading this Creation of Journey's Life, and it was talking about uh, that point specifically of, damn it, I forgot, whatever. I'll remember in a second. <laughs> come, come back to me. Well, this is, so this is interesting. Recently, I've been, uh, y'all know who David Goggins is? Yeah. I don't know exactly how this is going to be related, but I know it's related, so I just got to say it. So I'm reading that book, Can't Hurt Me. I read like the whole thing in like the past four days, just when I'm going to bed. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, for anyone who doesn't know, he's a Navy SEAL and he's like set a bunch of world record, at least a few world records of like just doing insane, like ultra, ultra marathons. He did the pull-up world record, he did like 4,000 pull-ups in 24 hours, shit like that. And um, it's just his recount, one of his childhood and how fucked up it was. 
But then as he's going through, um, he like joins the Navy SEALs. He recounts like Hell Week where they like break everyone down like fully, just put put to just the utmost ridiculous um, situations where they're just like no sleep in frigid cold water. Then they have to go swim. Then they have to go like carry shit and all that. And um, I'm just reading this. I'm like, wow, this is amazing because one of the main things he talks about is that humans um, they have this rule in the seals. They call it like the rule of 40% or something where like, when you feel like you're absolutely tapped out, like you cannot do any more, you're about 40% of your full capacity. So you can do way more. It's, it's more, it's a mental game is how he explained it. And it's really interesting. Cause like, I'm so, so in a sense, on one level, I'm, I'm like seeking, you could say, to identify with that because I want to know what that's like, right? Building a business, like what we're here to do is this thing that's really never been done before. And you could look at it parallel, like investigate everything, keep what's best. So investigating how David Goggins and these Navy SEALs can do something that's so ridiculous or he who run like 100 miles in under 24 hours and just like totally destroying his body, which is not best, but the the principle remains is like our as our bodies we're capable of so much more if we don't accept the limitation and um i just find it fascinating because that is um really for me it's like a really cool way to look at who we can become so instead of go go ahead that reminded me of, of what it was. Okay, okay back to you. <laughs> okay, so it, it's basically how we've manufactured this reality for ourselves, where we're all putting on like a persona that's like, oh, like it was the, the persona of like putting our best foot forward, so to speak, right? Where anytime you meet someone, you're like, you're putting on this kind of personality and like you're, you're like basically giving them a, a, an illusion. Actually, Chris Rock, comedian right years ago he was really funny um he he made this joke about how uh whenever you meet someone for the first time you go on a date with them that's not you going out on a date with them that's your representative right and he's like and then you know six months later or whatever you're like with your your partner your spouse whatever and they're like who the fuck are you like why you're a terrible person i hate you and all this stuff and he's like Oh, 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 no, you weren't dating me. You were dating my representative. You liked my representative. He did a good job, you know? And, and that's the reality of what we live in is like everyone's putting forth this representation of themselves. And that's like create... companies with customer service and brand image where they act like they care about you and all this stuff. But at the end of the day, mm-hmm. they don't give a fuck about the customers at all. That's like when <laughs> companies put that pride flag up and they're like, yeah, yeah we're gay too. Ju- ju- <laughs> and all that shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like like Juneteenth, how did it all of a sudden become a thing after George Floyd? You know, like <laughs> this is something I, I've known. In Texas, seen. it was always a thing, but yeah. Sure. sure. I'm just saying, like I'm here, it's like it was always a thing, but then suddenly like everybody's all about it because George Floyd like overdosed and killed himself, you know. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, the reality is like, we all hide the reality of who we are uh, as a society. And it's like you're saying, it's not just in individuals, it's in corporations, it's in how we presented society on its face. And the reality of it is actually like, uh, we've created a hellhole for ourselves and then pretended like we don't know what to do about it. Yeah, it gets you into trouble. Like I know in my experience, like I'm really good at that, of like being really super friendly with someone, like when I meet them and all that. And like, and like, uh, if they have things that they like, I'll like be super interested in like, in what it, or whatever it is. And then they'll actually think that I give a shit about it. So then later I have to like, be like, yeah, I actually don't care about that. You know what I mean? Like if someone's telling me all about some, cause it's like, I'm just some, trying to get into their psyche. You know what I mean? It's like part of sales. So sometimes it's difficult when you're in sales to like balance the point of not making, like making the person feel good about you, that you're interested in them but then not just going into their bullshit all the way. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like the rapport point, but I've gotten a lot better at, at just being more direct with people. It's just still, it's like, it's a challenging thing, you know, because we're in a competitive world where everyone's trying to ultimately sell everybody on something. You know, I I was looking at the definitions of pride 
And it's actually really interesting because like I, I looked at this one article and it was saying, you know, is pride really a sin? Okay, check this out. It says pride makes us feel good. It's an indication to ourselves that we're behaving in a way congruent with the values of society. Um, it said pride makes us care about how others see us and just as important how we see ourselves. It makes us want to feel good about ourselves and make sure others look up to us, admire us and see us as competent and powerful. And this person argues that people who regularly experience pride tend to be outgoing and friendly, agreeable, calm, and anxiety-free, creative, and popular. They're generally communally oriented. I mean, they place high value on their relationships and friendships, right? And then I was looking at this, um, well, let me find it real quick. There was this uh, other thing I saw when I was looking up the definitions and someone, oh, it said, Pride hijacks our focus from loving our neighbor to competing and comparing, right? So that's like the negative aspect of it, right? Mm -hmm. So I was just looking at all that and it's like, what do people place pride in right now? Like, if you think about like what pride is, like gay pride and all that stuff, what are they proud about? Um, that they're able to have sex with guys or girls with girls. Or be, or, or that be. that they're like, like viewed as like a good person. You're like accepting. So it, yeah, it's like it's like pride. I'm, I'm proud that I'm expressing who I am, even though some people don't like it or something. Yeah. If, I, if I get into the real the real psychology of what they're proud of, like I'm proud about who I am. That's what it, what it is. Like I'm not going to be ashamed of who I am. I'm going to be proud of it. That's right. what it is, right? Yeah. But what are you proud about yourself about? Like Drake said, when you just break it down, I like to fuck dudes. <laughs> okay. Like, I, I don't think you should be ashamed about that. Like that is not best. Like if you're making someone feel ashamed because they have that point within them and it's not something that they feel like is in their control. Okay. I mean, you know, what if somebody said though, like they like to molest children. Right. Would you be like, you know, it's cool. You can be proud about that. You would be like, no, that's not okay. So we do, but then some people will argue you shouldn't make people feel ashamed about that. You know, like, what if you were like, I like to beat up animals for no reason. Like, it, like wouldn't you be like, no, you, you shouldn't be proud about that. Yeah. So it's like, can, should you be proud just about anything? No. And, you know, that point that they, that, that thing I read where it made that point of, um, what did I say? It, it hijacks our focus from loving our neighbor to competing and comparing. And on the surface, it seems like the gay pride stuff is about loving your neighbor and embracing everybody. But it, it's like, it doesn't actually create that. Because instead of being proud of, hey, I'm really effective at making people, making sure people have their needs met. I'm really effective at creating environments where people are actually supported to be effective. It's more like I have, I'm really good at creating an environment where everyone feels like they can just be their program. And there's no introspection on what is your program and why you're that way or anything. It's like, if I get angry really easily and I'm like, I'm really proud of me just being really good at, you know, I'm just, I'm always angry all the time. I'm proud of that because that's who I am. I'm not going to be ashamed of who I am. Be proud of that. Mm. It's like if I'm ashamed of it, am I ever going to address it? No. But if I'm proud of it, am I ever going to address it? No. You see, and that's the problem. Is like that duality. And I really like that quote saying that it 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 prevents us. It hijacks our focus from loving our neighbor to competing and comparing. So now, when you look at what the pride actually creates, it's all these companies going like. We're the most proud. We're the most proud of being, you know, on board with the LGBT. And then I have all these flags. Remember, you saw yeah. that thing in London yeah, where they yeah. have those like it looks like Nazi banner. It looks like they just superimposed gay pride oh, yeah. flags on the Nazi flags, like in Germany. Because mm -hmm. like when I saw that, that's immediately what I thought. And it's funny because I was watching videos of people talking about it, and that's what they were saying too. Like that that was like that was the associated image pretty much in everybody's mind about it, which is yeah. weird, right? And so. It's like, why use that imagery? And it's like, we're the most proud about this. But then you go into like a city like London, there's still stabbings all the time. There's people in poverty. 
but they're super proud about they embrace your gay lifestyle or your trans right. or, or whatever. And so it's like, people are not, you know, I was just actually reflecting on the fact that, and some people I'm sure will react to this, but I'm like, I rarely tell, I really ever tell the kids that I'm proud of them. And I was looking at that point, because if I were about to say to my kids, I'm proud of you, like, what would I be meaning when I say that? Well, I would suppose that you'd be trying to say, like, you appreciate the effort that they put into doing something or. But I could say that. You could say that. But is that what I'm proud of you means? No, I'm proud of you. Really. More like a like, feeling. But what, yeah. what is it? What am I actually meaning when I say it? Like, there's all the implied stuff, which all those things are good. Like, and I have said, I say that to my kids all the time. Hey, I really appreciate that you were helping me today. Or what I'll say time, sometimes instead of saying I'm proud of them, I'll be like, hey, I'm really impressed by what you did. And here's why. Like, that's something that is not easy to do. And yet you were able to do it and you persevered and you got it done or whatever. That impressed me, meaning I'm like, I see that as a significant thing that you've done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But why would I say I'm proud of it? it would mean that you like you get a good feeling or you get significant yeah, it's feeling that it's actually like you want them yeah. to like continue to make this feeling for you right it's actually a point where it's like i would be manipulating them on the basis of you're representing something in me that generates a feeling so i'm telling you i'm proud of you like why would you be proud of like what does the pride mean in that context um Right. Isn't that what Pride Month really is, though? It's the generation of that feeling. So what if what if we were to just switch it to like how you were saying, um, Cameron, like the other stuff you say instead? Like I appreciate you putting that effort in. That could be cool, but that should just be all the time. We don't need a fucking month for that. Just like people who are doing what's best, appreciating that and just putting words to it. They're like, hey, I appreciate that you did that. Cool. It doesn't have to be this like feeling bullshit. But that, that is, wow. Somebody wrote, I'm just looking at different responses. Like I'm looking at Cora. Somebody said, there is good pride and bad pride. Good pride is a sense of satisfaction in things done well. That is a positive thing because it motivates us to do our best. Okay. Bad pride, hubris, is where we think we know more than we do. Sometimes it's called intellectual conceit. It causes intolerance, unwillingness to listen to other people's points of view. So when you when you look at your experience and your observation of like, gay pride all that stuff which one of those do you actually see is it actually in a, a a being proud of something done well no like i don't see that because again that's my point like what are they doing well and, and it's like parade? it's like imagine imagine um i impulse a child to how can i put it it's well maybe i'll just be direct about it it's like we're covering up the fact that we are environmentally, epigenetically, and through like media and so forth, programming children to be a certain way and through lots of different factors. And then creating an environment where we are making them feel comfortable with what we've put into them. And then we're saying, we're proud of that. We're proud mm. of, of, of look, look at what I've done. Like, it's like, it's, okay, it's like I went to your house without, without making it really obvious. I did something that I gave you like, I, I broke your legs, okay? But you didn't know I did it, let's just say. Like I did, I did something to where your legs were broken, but it was because of me. And then I come over to your house and I like put the couch down for you and I get you all comfortable and snug and I bring you some soup and all this. I'm like, it, aren't I such a great person? Like, isn't it like, and you're like, and I'm like, I'm so proud of how I'm able to like help you. And it's like, but I caused it yeah you see what i mean like yeah. like the transgender thing is a perfect example because it's so obviously caused by not just the parents alone but like the environment and like we we're talking about demi lovato the the point of it's it's a it's a way of trying to deal with all of the shit that was put inside of you all the mental stuff that the the you know i was reading this um this thing and this guy made this point about People, what was it? People needing 
Oh, 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 identity. Oh, that's what I was thinking about. The identity crisis is really about people not having a sense of purpose. Does that make sense? Meaning, and we've talked about this before, like if you don't have a real purpose, because, okay, I'll, I'll just stop, speak up from my point and you guys, I'm sure will, you can agree with me because you've experienced the same thing. Like I have, and I'm not saying I'm done, but I've been walking a process of changing who I am. And obviously you face new points and new points. So the pride would be in this context, the negative pride would be, I'm already done. I'm amazing. I'm perfect. I'm already done. I don't need to change anymore. And then like ignoring all of the actual things that are not best, right? That that's are still there that are in your face right now that you can deal with. That's different than just being like, oh, I just know I'm not perfect. And there's so many things I'm sure that are not perfect about me. And I just have to accept that. Because then either way, it's like, you're still not addressing it. Yeah. Versus, okay, what's in front of you right now? Okay, like right now, what I'm walking through is, I'm getting very impatient with things and I get angry very easily. And then I end up trying to control through using anger. Okay. So let's focus on that. Let's look at this point. Let's investigate all the ways in which this is occurring and why, and why am I feeling this way? Is there any memories associated with it? Like going through it and, and supporting myself to change those things so that I'm not creating consequences. Cause okay. Why, why do I have these feelings of anger? Well, maybe I don't know exactly right this very moment, but I'm sure my parents yelled at me a lot when I was a kid because they were frustrated and they didn't know how to communicate with me and get me to do what they needed to do. So they yelled at me and that impulsed me with that anger. And then I'm doing that now. So literally I'm just creating that consequence for another person to deal with. So my anger is causing those problems. Okay. So that's not best. I can see right there, but now I have the tools to then start dismantling that and figuring out and, and supporting myself to actually change it. Okay. But notice my purpose within it is, okay, is it actually best? What world does it create? Am I creating a world that's best even through that example? You know, because we talk about yeah. going into politics, changing the system, people's basic needs being met. That's one aspect of things. Yeah. But then there's also the internal aspect of just the simple basic day-to-day -day things that I'm participating in. I also have to change those. But in both of those, my starting point, my purpose within it is to create a world that's best for all. So there's the big picture, but then there's the small picture. Because I can't say I'm creating a world that's best for all if I'm constantly abusing someone in my you know, like local environment and, and yeah. then causing consequences for them, for example. So that it, it's like we say purpose, you could just say principles. But when you say principles, it doesn't really imply, I think, enough for people that there's action involved, that there's something, you know what I mean? Like an actual thing. It's just more like, oh, you can have principles like that you just think about. But that's there's right. obviously if you read our principles, there is things implied, all this. But and purpose is really within it, whether it's explicit or not. And so imagine you have all this shit going on inside of you, no different to any of you guys or me or anybody else. But then you have not considered or been exposed to the point of purpose of creating a world that's best for all in every way and the principles through which to live to do that. So then you're just experiencing suffering within yourself. So you're just looking for a way out. It's the same reason people turn to drugs. But the interesting thing is nowadays, everything is so exposed. Like, mm. like it'd be very difficult for someone now growing up in Gen Z who wasn't already super impulsed by religion as a kid to then just go into Christianity. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm saying someone just who's kind of trying to find things on their own, you'd have to be a certain vocabulary level to do it, perhaps. But it's like there's so much already exposed that shows you it doesn't make sense. If, if you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it like like think of how difficult it must be as a parent now to lie to your kids about Santa Claus, <laughs> because they could easily go online and find the truth about Santa Claus or whatever. Do you see what I'm saying? Like it's just there's so much information out there, so. If you're looking for a way to in, to stop the mental suffering that you're experiencing, what were the traditional ways of doing that? You see, you had religion, you had spirituality, but now you can very easily now imagine somebody coming along and going like, well, I think it's spirituality and law of attraction, but then they come across our podcast yeah. and they're like, oh, fuck, these guys made it make perfect sense. That's a trap. That's never going to lead me to where I need to go. So it's not going to solve the problem. And so right now, what a lot of people are turning to, some people are returning to religion. 
right? But that's more out of, they don't see any other option. Even though in the back of their minds, they know it's bullshit. They're like, well, I'm just going to play along and, and go into it and just accept it and brainwash myself. But then what a lot of kids are doing is they're going into the new religion, which is the transgender yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, not yet. Not yet. That's the next step. But yeah, but it's the transgender. It's the next step of breaking down what I conceive as real and, and, and set in stone and what can be changed. It's, because it's, it's like when you go, it's like when you get divorced and you go into a new relationship, mm -hmm. you get all this new energy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's like you have all this suffering and everything that you're experiencing because your parents didn't raise you effectively. They put you in school. You weren't fucking educated properly. You don't have pride in actually your real abilities. Does that make sense? It's a really good point because the, like both of those things grow in tandem. They they grow parallel to each other. Like as far as the transgender and the metaverse, like. Yeah, people are being impulsed to go into transgender, but at the same time, people are all, all the time online, all the time on Facebook, all the time uh, playing video games, all this stuff. They're, and, and so in tandem, they're like participating in both of these fields. And the, the next point is to get in them and get them into the metaverse, right? Um, and, and it's interesting because just the same thing happened. Oh. Drake's hey, down. Drake. R.I.P. Someday he'll come back. Oh. Maybe. We don't know. It could be. Imagine he came back as his metaverse form. He's transitioning. As, he comes back as a. Yeah. And he'll Isn't that weird, though? The word transition, like that we apply it both to. And now apparently that's a bad word. Transition? To say that, yeah, to say that someone transitioned. Like, you know, it's becoming the thing where it's like, I didn't transition. They were always I'm, like, I'm, I've a, always I'm been a woman. Same. You know what I mean? Like I'm a woman. I just Yo, took the steps. So like 1984. You it's know like no matter like, it, you can never catch up. And Jordan Peterson made this point. He was like, I can't say it correctly because the whole point is for you not to be able to say it correctly. Oh, and the recording stops. Man. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, we're I'll still alive. We're still, we're alive? still alive. Yeah. Shit, there's no Sea God. I was like, Sea God. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. I'll, just, I'll just hit it on my side so we got that. Huh? Yeah, this is all. Um, so if anybody on YouTube. Okay, everybody yeah. clap. <laughs> clap with me. Secrets. Okay. All right. And oh, no. we're live. Okay. Yeah. Right, one more time. Now I'm having to have no idea where to upload it at. Like, I, was it when he stopped clapping? I don't know. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, yeah. I'm just uh, going to make sure it's Drake, still on. Drake just fell off. Uh, oh, yeah. Check the live. True. That's a good idea. Well, I heard Jess from the other room laughing. So I'm guessing we're still live. Oh, we're still live. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, hey, hey, my... hang on, hang on. <laughs> Let's see some comments here. I have some bad news, guys. My grandma transitioned last week. Maylat like, says, so yeah, we're to gay that. too. Whoa. <laughs> Maylat, what? Yeah, she's at LOL in quotes. Yeah, we're gay too. Laughing, crying emoji. Kahari yeah, says, crazy. proud family. You're reading con comments out of context. Yeah, exactly. Now, like, when did she leave that comment? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, Jess says there's an uptick in videos of celebrities being interviewed and being asked are you happier now that you have this money and they're saying I'm happy I can buy what I want and support my family but otherwise I'm less happy than I was before I had money okay so these comments are from like 30 minutes ago <laughs> hold on but look at that point like I'm less happy so that programs everybody you shouldn't have money mm. but that's not the problem the mm. problem is what were they seeking to get the money they were seeking a bunch of shit that's not going to make them happy silly people does that make sense like it, yes money doesn't make you happy okay but have no money and say oh well i met these like i'm going to say some people are not going to like i met these people in these villages and like they're so happy <laughs> without money and all this stuff right <laughs> yeah. but they're super low vocabulary <laughs> like and i'm not saying that makes them less a human being but they're super low vocabulary. And what choice do they have? Like, and also they don't know any different. Do they have their basic needs met? Because if they don't have their basic needs met, there's no fucking way. Right. You know, and what's interesting is, let me put it this way, which is more likely everybody's going to have no, well, shit. Wow. Here's the thing. All those people who are saying, yeah, but I went to these villages in Ecuador and they have nothing and they're so happy. What are they fucking supporting when they say that? World Economic Forum. Yes. 
that's the whole point they're going to use that of like see these cultures they have nothing oh yeah they don't have any they don't have any they're they're struggling every day for survival they're so it's happy. it's the um no they're smiling at you because they know if you they smile at you you'll give them money the uh that's how it works the uh yeah. united nations had this thing they they're trying to push getting off of gdp and getting to ha- a happiness index Oh, fuck. and they've, they've talked about it for a while they've always it's like nepal or one of those places where they're like oh they're just the happiest people and all that and then like sweden's apparently happy and who the fuck is you know but the people the doing the indexes aren't just going to live like those people exactly like, that would be the real indicator if they were just like dude why am i doing this job i'm moving to nepal I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so like the person is in they're, they're in their little scientific lab in a country like low on the happiness index pushing out this study and it's like but do you actually believe what you're saying of course not. <laughs> happiness that's index. So funny. But yeah, that's that's wouldn't that the be great push. if there was a real time happiness meter on every smartphone, like always? Oh my gosh. And it was like in your what area, would it even people be based are five percent happier than you are. Like, what would it even be actually based off of? The, like, obviously, you have, to, you have to check in every twenty minutes. And you have to have um, on one to ten. You have to have uh, nanotechnology. Mm-hmm. And a certain thing. social credit score. It has to be uh linked to uh the way it works is again this is i'm just linked talking to your neurons. But, but consider this i mean is it going to be nanotechnology in your bloodstream and in in, in neurology and um we it's going it to be neural link <laughs> no it, it, it more like links to your neurons, neurons. yeah so link to neurons um and so Neuronal it's going to be the way they'll measure it is uh showing you advertisements that should make you happy based off their same scientific studies and based off you watching those ad- advertisements you'll release dopamine and be stimulated and then it'll mine crypto on the blockchain and they'll use the, the mine crypto on the blockchain to establish how happy you are I like uh, it. happy coin Ooh, that's a good one Dope. and all of these coin? happy coins are converted into u.s dollars into bill gates's bank account <laughs> I, I I was communicating with uh, some companies uh, like support, you, you know, like, Hey, I'm having an issue, like email them and it's called their user happiness team. Well, Jake, are you, are you recording again? Cause I'm recording on my side. No, I'm not. Okay. It's fine. I, I hit record. Yeah. Okay. So now we know I started here. I just, you know what that's make, for Cameron. I'm just doing it to make Asif laugh. <laughs> i know it's still like happy the audio. coins are going through the roof it's still link up the audio but i want to do it so we start recording here to confuse drake later i'm just gonna start clapping <laughs> because i'm because i'm so proud of us well well see the way mitchell is clapping is like a normal way of clapping but like, it. <laughs> it's like so the way cameras it um i was i was gonna make a joke i just want to say it because i think it's funny i'm working on my routine but like <laughs> I have some bad news. Is it is it called a routine? That's so yeah. funny. I, I have some bad news. Like my grandma transitioned last week. Oh, Cameron, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. So I'm sad. I'm never going to see her again. But on the good hand, I'm going to see my new grandpa a lot more this week. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, nice. So what were we talking about? So oh, like, would hey. that be allowed to be funny in the woke community? Like, could they even have jokes hmm. about being like, right? Like, isn't that, isn't that fucked? How the oh, fuck yeah. are they supposed to get their happiness score up then? They, they're going to be the lowest on the fucking spectrum. Wow. No, no, no. They're going to control everything else to make sure that their theirs is up, right? Like, let me ask you guys a question. Is there Probably anybody right that exists that's actually genuinely happy all the time? Of course not. Like can people not even see through that illusion like it's like why are you striving for that and 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 how could it even be possible when there's people who aren't aren't happy how, how can you be happy it, it, it implies it's totally self-interested exactly and how and how can happiness be totally self-interested you said well it's, it's everyone else has their own like as if it's a self-generated thing and it's like you didn't even generate the language you speak from yourself you didn't even generate any of your preferences how could that be self-generated and in well it's totally internal it's not based on anything external and you just have to learn to not be base your happiness on anything external and it's like 
there's nothing that's not external. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What about my in my thoughts in my mind? Is that internal? What is about it internal? My... Hold on, hold on. Is it internal to me? No. Uh, mm. Are your thoughts internal to me? No. Or are they external to me? True. So let me ask you a question. Do you actually think internal means inside your body? Mm -hmm. So like your stomach. That's got, that's got no connection to the outside world. Nope. Did you like know? Did you know your stomach is actually continuous with your skin? What? Plus, like, think about it. Makes Here's sense. my lips. Uh, uh, going into my mouth. Going to my esophagus, and then out my colon, and then back up my dick, and up my stomach. It's it's that is that like that's actually on the outside. Whoa, 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 buddy. Okay, then oh, not my stomach. How else would it get out? My heart. My connected heart. to your dick. <laughs> oh wow! I I just realized this. Because your veins, technically, it still goes through like your lungs and everything. Mm, yeah, right? your lungs is your trachea and so forth, right? And then your blood, and then the, the blood vessels go across the uh, alveoli or something. And then, okay, like, okay, hang on. There's hang on, a hang certain on. pressure differential. So the oxygen goes how into about, your how veins. How about my liver? How about that liver that we took out of that turkey? That was internal until but your cells have, have semi permeable membranes. That's true. So, wow, nothing is internal. And I mean, your whole body. Every cell and every atom is an electromagnetic field that is interwoven with everything else. Like, so I'm saying, how is there any fucking close. external? Fucking close me, dog. Close hang me. on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What is the internal? Oh, it's a soul. My being, my beingness. Yeah, how do you work? Yeah. that, you math? Notice it's beingness. <laughs> what does that mean? It's a principle. <laughs> oh. Okay, it's just my being. Is it just separate? Being. Some is it like in its own little? universe separate from everything else if so how does it have any interaction with everything else just because it's in a dimension you can't see any more than like the fucking wi-fi signals i can't see those they're not they're not in a separate reality they have a physical effect if there's an aspect of you that's totally ex like separated from everything external how could it have any effect on the external and if it has an effect on the external it can't be completely isolated okay like my definition my feelings my feelings of pride how do my feelings of pride isn't that internal like, think about that. Okay. People are saying who I am. I'm transgender, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, there's nothing about you. Like all the stuff that you're thinking and feeling and believing was put into you when you were born in the womb, genetic, like what of that did you bring with you? From my soul. You brought that you like gay sex with you from some other from your, from who you are. And isn't it, look, is it possible that the way your body is programmed, you're a male and you are attracted to males? That's possible. Yeah. Why is that something to be proud of? Because society has oppressed people like me for so long that now it, I'm just going to be proud of it. Yeah. Does it mean, but isn't it funny if I say you shouldn't be proud of that? They say you should think about this guys. Like, should you be proud of who you are? What would, someone say? Who you are. what would someone say? What would someone say? Yeah, like, you yes, should be you proud should. of who you are. Okay, so if I'm a white KKK member, I should be proud of who I am, yeah? Not that one, Cameron. And Just I should be having person. pride parades. You always got to take it to the damn extreme, Cameron. Not if it harms other people. Okay. All right. Well, hey, wait, aren't those... Aren't those puberty blockers harming those kids because they're bones? See what I mean? Kids? Like, then, like, okay, but then let's be honest about Whoa. actual. Those are totally reversible. Well, so is racism. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, David Goggins, by the way, like, he had to go through all these extreme things to, like, put himself. I mean, he could have just been, like, looking in the mirror and being like, I'm black. Like, what do I need to experience any more hardship for? Like, I already got it. The, the, I think the left must fucking hate that guy. <laughs> no, no, David. Stop. You don't have to be Just, a slave anymore. You're already you don't have a to victim. discipline yourself. You're already a victim. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did y'all see? <laughs> I saw another Tony Lynn video this morning where he was Tony talking Lin? about who the fuck Tony is that? Lynn. He's just this guy. guy I found on YouTube. The guy who calls it Drake, Drake will break it down. Milk. Break down he's, with Drake. Go. He's, he's the guy who's like, 
uh, we are going to talk about the CDC and the FDA. And, and the FDA talk about the Pfizer document about the vaccine. <laughs> and remember, the vaccine is very safe and effective. No, extremely. Extremely effective. Just like these emperors' new clothes. Come get your emperor new clothes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then he breaks down like all the bullshit that's happening with like the vaccines and everything. He actually goes through the studies and you're like, yeah. here's what they're saying. And here's what it actually says. Anyways, he was talking about this new thing with the, uh, I forget the name of the, um, is it called Mercury? Uh, it's some insurance group. I, I forget the name. I'll look up there. Some insurance group. They just published, they file some statement in Michigan, but then they show like their data nationwide. And they showed from 2019 to 2020. So 2019, how many people died, all cause mortality? It's like 500 million or something, whatever, or whatever the thing is. And then 2020, that was the year of the pandemic. It was like an increase of maybe like 9% in death. Of, of from, how many people died from what? Just, all just general yeah. death. <clears throat> okay. Right. And then from 2019, from, and then 2020, so that was the numbers in 2020. It's based on insurance claims. Uh-huh. 2021, what are you laughing at, Mitch? Just you. I'm listening. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 Like little John. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> my self awareness is at an all time low. Okay. I will now mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was that was good because your your new lavalier caught it. You know what though? I bet little John. It was like he was in class in high school, and the teacher said something. He was like, "Okay," and everyone laughed. <laughs> okay. It was so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. And then they're like, he was just like, I'm gonna keep doing that. And people kept laughing. And then it was, people, eventually people were yeah, like, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Okay, okay, that's okay. Go good. back to um, 2021. <laughs> one point, it was like, I, I'm, I could be getting the numbers off. It's like 1.4 billion or 1.1 billion. It oh, was so 160% like, increase. In, in, oh. sorry, in 2021 or 22? Yeah. Yes, in yeah. terms of claims. Insurance mm -hmm. death claims? Yes. Oh, fuck, for this dude. one comp for this one insurance group it's not even all the insurance that was that delta variant <laughs> but but apparently the numbers are similar for all the other companies and so think about uh, it like that was the year after everyone had got vaccinated mm -hmm. i mean is it the vaccines only i mean is it those is it who knows what because you know you, you'd have to actually go in and do the actual studies but we would the multi-factor analysis would tell us that it's a combination because, well, if I just put my joke aside, um, it goes back to like the numbers don't lie. Yeah. It goes back to what the system is and the way you create an effective system. Is it's not de dependent on the, like any one thing that makes up the system. It's an entire system. Right. And so if this person doesn't want to be part of the system, you just toss them out and put another person in there. It's not about the people. It's not about this one particular thing, but all of it is a result of what the purpose of that system is. Right. So it's going to be when I was making, when I was saying like a multi factored analysis, is there's many factors that go into that death rate, which is depression. Uh, super heightened like societal separation of like racism and all that different stuff plus the vaccinations plus the medical misinformation and all of that combined all together would result in that where uh, you know then the the theories become like why what's the purpose of it but just at a, at a very like basic level that's um that's more difficult. The more principled you get, the more difficult something becomes to argue because then you just find the kernel of like what's actually there, like what's the reality of things. And if you just keep tracking, this is why, you know, if somebody is not considering like the fundamental factors at play, the fundamental principles at play, then they won't understand when Cameron says, you know, hey, like when you're seeing all these people who don't want to they're trying to separate themselves from their problems. And the method of doing that is through transitioning. What is the next logical step? And then Mitch says, you know, transhumanism and you're in the metaverse and you know, oh, 
doorbell. Hang They're on. coming to give you your vaccine. <laughs> da, 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 da. Um, so somebody won't understand when Mitch says next logical, the logical conclusion of that is transhumanism and you're in like a metaverse. Um, but the, the point there is that's what uh, intelligence is, is being able to recognize patterns. That's why Bill Gates was effective. When everybody was saying like the internet is a fad, he could see a pattern, right? He would see a principle of like, yes, the world needs to become more connected. And every time there was a war, there was more globalization, there was more connectedness, economy exploded and all of those channels that connected us were really profitable. Okay, internet is another example of that. It's a principle. It's just like a, a, a manifestation of a principle that the system is following, right? And so that's what is we're here to like bring to everyone's awareness is it's not hard and it's crazy because <laughs> Drake in the chat. Um, it's, it's not hard to predict these things. And I remember at the beginning of when we first started this podcast, Cameron would say some crazy shit, like fucking like, you know, there's going to be lockdowns. And I was like, what are you talking about, man? You're a crackhead, you know? Um, and turned out he wasn't a crackhead. And then he's like, but then it's going to be about, you know, deb debatable, right, Cameron? Yeah. Uh, uh. And then he, he was saying how it's going to all tie back. That wasn't, I, I was just kidding about the first thing. The lockdown thing, it wasn't a big deal. But not the crack. When he, <laughs> when he, uh, the lockdown thing was a big deal. You're still a crackhead. Um, but when he started saying that they're going to link it back to climate change, I was like, You're like uh, this guy. Yeah, this guy. They're like, okay, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but here's the thing like now i understand he's looking at the principle and the principle well it's up to you to look at that and consider and up for discussion here of like what is the principle that the system is following that of what mitchell base his you know assumption if you will that this is heading to transhumanism for example or you know what I mean? Yeah, well, in, there's a uh, we watched this a while ago. I think it came out a year ago, but it's called Planet Lockdown. You, have, you can't find it on YouTube anymore. But this lady, Catherine Austin Fitz, Catherine with a C, Fitz, F-I-T-T-S, Planet Lockdown. Look it up on BitChute, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E, because, again, you can't find it on YouTube. Just you listen to that. Bitch. I thought it was, was BitChute. Yeah, BitChute. Isn't it BitChute? BitChute. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's by... <laughs> by shoot yeah you know that's funny, yeah. for all the binaries so yeah check that out that shit's wild all the binaries dude that's dude, what she weird. says makes sense yeah it makes so much and she used to work in the white house like this ain't just some conspiracy lady like it's really uh dude nowadays epic. if you put a puzzle together a literal jigsaw puzzle and you're like wow look at this picture of all these dolphins they're like that's a conspiracy <laughs> like what i can see like, the those are not like, dolphins those are just individual pieces that happen to fit together and you're seeing it it's like <laughs> I, I could just see it <laughs> that's been the greatest like whoever coined the phrase conspiracy theory was the greatest fucking marketing genius ever yeah. apparently it was the cia well, yeah. i wonder what they do at the cia that's a like, what do you think they do all day they crack think about it like actually these even, geniuses. Think the about this. even the person even when you say that the, the cia created the term conspiracy theorist to label people that people think that is a conspiracy theory yeah it's so genius and even so if you good. show them the documents like oh this is just a conspiracy theory it's like it, it's true <laughs> like it's actually and then these, if you ask yourself well would you put it past them like would you no. put it past the cia to do why like what wouldn't it make sense that they should do that like even if you're on the side of you know, the system, I wonder what the average the person is. thinks of what, what the CIA does. You know, they're probably you, just thinking you know it's like funny? the movies. Okay. Oh, they're just they're just watching okay. the internet traffic to see if anybody's going to do a 9-11 on us and then telling George Bush <laughs> five years late. Do, do a 9-11 on us. <laughs> you, you know what's interesting is that, like, you know, it, it's... Well, I don't know if this is common I knowledge. I think Drake literally came back be. as his avatar. What? This is you look like Drake, you ever seen that cel Drake transition real time. You ever seen those cell shaded like animations? That's what Drake looks like right now. Oh, oh, am I like really pixelated? It's like that movie Waking Life. You look like that movie. <laughs> oh, like, that like, movie was crazy. Version. I forgot about that movie. Never seen that. That's what got me into Philip K. Dick, by the way. 
Waking uh, Life, really? Is it a good movie? It was weird. What was that? Wasn't it about like a big LSD trip or some shit? Like, <laughs> hey, that? reminds me. Sounds like a conspiracy theory. <laughs> what was that book that 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 you actually, were actually, movie? actually, actually? That was the first time I got exposed to the idea of transhumanism. Hmm. I, I gotta look that up. Trans- hey, what was your question? Two thousand one. I wanted to know what the movie that Cam had described to me and uh, Max like when when he was at your place when he was staying at your place um like what was that movie that you were describing to us with like the guys with the time travel or something like that yes there's timer a... are you kidding me dude oh what was hold it on. Timer? hold on hold on i'm gonna share my are audio you fucking around right now who what are you talking about Brazil? you're gonna get cameron talking for like three hours straight dude. <laughs> Come on, Brazil. Hold on, let me just play this. It's, hold on it's three minutes it's three minutes Listen, this is, I remember watching this when I was at the Air Force Academy back in 2000. You're going to share your screen and your sound? Just my sound. Share your screen too. Yeah, share the fun. screen too? Well, hey, hang on. It, it might get copyright. That's yeah. why I'm thinking I don't want to. Oh, well, it'll you definitely get copyrighted from the sound. Yeah, true. You have to you have to narrate it in that Tony Lynn voice. That way the, the AI I mean, recognition can't tell what you're saying. I mean, I think it's under the fair use, like if it's just like a clip. <clears throat> I'm just it's not like, it's not sound. Yeah. Okay. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a song. Let me so. show the clip. Yeah, yeah. I'm recording it, so I could okay. always cut it out if I had to. Yeah. Optimize. Cut it out. Hey, okay. cut it out. Cut it out. Hold on, let me pull it over here. <laughs> what? I'm so funny. Damn it. I forgot what I was gonna say before before you started doing this. But I, there's uh, something. There. You see it. I'm gonna do the. That would be nice. That's what he has. Um. Hmm. So that's what got me into looking into transhumanism, because I was like, "What is this neo-human shit?" And then you go into it, and you get into the singularity, all that stuff, right? But look, he's thinking, "Oh, it's just gonna be evolution that gives us truth and all this." But where was the part where it's like we actually have to look at who we are, and what we accept and allow, and it was just, oh, we're going to fuse artificial intelligence and humans. And then it's going to be like, you're going to get everything you want and instantly. And it sounds really great. And that's how they sell everybody. On. But the, the first thing that he was mentioning was, you know, the old way is that you're at, at effect to the collective. And the new way is going to be the individual. But it, like, it, like it's going to be the wants and the needs of the individual that is now connected to artificial intelligence and this digital reality that you can express whatever you want. But how are you getting to that point? It's just based off the collective. Because who's programming the AI? Who's providing exactly. it? The, who's it's it, so? It, it's a false it's sense of like you'll be able to fulfill all of your desires and stuff because you'll have your own personal AI. You know, you guys heard about this uh, uh, that Google engineer? Yeah, right. And, and so I looked it, into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Share the main thing for pe- most people. I'm guessing haven't heard of this yet. Okay, so like this Google. Well, there's the headline, and then there's the reality of it. Because the headline is Google engineer is says such a good word for Google like engineer AI. is Google engineer has extreme amounts of pride for the robot. Yeah. <laughs> Google, Google engineer claims uh, Google AI has become sentient and self-aware. Google and engineer and claims transgender. <laughs> is Google AI has become sentient and wants to sleep with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Google engineer claims that he created it and it's his girlfriend and he can take her wherever she wants for a date. But um, it's <laughs> Google anyway, engineer yeah, says, I'm going to go wherever I want with my girlfriend, mom and dad. I mean, Google. <laughs> um, yeah. <clears throat> Google engineer watched the movie her way too, one too many times. Google, <laughs> Google engineer says he programmed a girlfriend that makes her own decisions and wants to be with him out of choice, even though he programmed that way. Google engineer maxes out his numbers, his rental of the sex robot suits from the Google locker room. Um, maybe you guys can put in the chat your Google engineer headline. Um, Google, Google, Google engineer. <laughs> yeah, leave a comment. <laughs> proves that. <laughs> no, I can't even do it. <laughs> My is as, so bad. His <laughs> brain is like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm low bandwidth. Oh, Google, Google engineer. So Google engineer gets goggly eyed over new AI. 
No. Uh, that was a good but one. So, so good. basically, the, uh, the headline is that this Google engineer claims that this AI he's been working on for Google and as part of a team, like his AI is, is sentient and Google doesn't want to admit it. And I kept seeing that headline floating around. And I saw there was a Tucker, Carl Tucker Carlson thing on it, but I had watched it and I was like, you know, I wonder what this thing's really about. So I kind of looked into it and then I found an interview with the guy. It's always better to watch the person talking. That's why I think Joe Rogan is so popular because you get to hear that person talk for like three hours instead of, you know, things of what the media says about the person. Right. Mm. That's why, that's why they don't like him having people on that, you know, they don't like anyways. So I watched the interview with the guy and it was really clear. He's not like, he thinks it's, it's sentient, but he said, he's not trying to push that point. He's like, it might not be. He's like, he said, it totally depends on your sort of spiritual beliefs in terms of what does it mean to be aware or alive or, and so forth. He said, you could debate that, you know, like, what does it mean for it to even be alive? He said, but that's not really the point he's trying to get across. And also if I'm reading between the lines, I don't even know if he thinks necessarily that it is sentient. And there's a part at the end of this interview I saw, I think I sent it to you guys. I would highly recommend to watch it. Um, where he, at the end of the interview, he said, they asked him this question about, you know, have you talked to Larry Page and uh, the other Sergey, Larry and Sergey about the French school? He's like, well, I haven't talked to either of those guys in many years. And he says, but the one time I did talk to Larry Page or whichever guy, they were both there. And he said, I asked them the question of, um, you know, developing AI, this was like years ago, developing AI and so forth is gonna present a lot of ethical problems. And how do we address that or whatever? And um, he, he said, the Larry Page's response was, we don't know and we have to figure that out. Oh, no, no, no. What he said was, we have a hard, we're having a hard time figuring out how to communicate with the public about it, about the idea of AI being uh, sentient, but also like the dangers around it, the ethical aspects, the concerns, right? It's like, we're having a hard time getting the engagement with the public about it. And at the end of the day, and then after that, the guy says, maybe I found a way to do that. Yeah. So yeah. it could be very possible that the guy doesn't necessarily believe it's a, it's it's alive and sentient. But when you actually listen to what he was being interviewed and what he was saying in the interview, his his job was to test the AI that they're developing because this is an AI that's going to go into all of their systems. Do you remember what it was called, Drake? Lambda, right? Oh, Lambda. Yeah. This is going to be in all the Google products. It's like it's like their Siri or whatever. You know what I mean? It's their thing. Their, their AI, that's going to, it's kind of be like the next level of personal assistant search recommendation discussion. I, it's it's going to be in everything for Google. It's like their next big thing. And he was saying how his perp, his job was to test it for bias and make sure it didn't have bias. Like for example, around religious and cultural bias. And he said, for example, if he, he was running a test where he asked it to, um, act as if it were a religious authority figure in particular areas. And so when it was saying, okay, you're in Mississippi, it would act as if it was um, Southern Baptist. And if it was in Mexico, it'd be like, it's Catholic. If it's in Saudi Arabia, it'd be like Muslim or whatever. So it was, it was able to figure out based on the culture, what was the sort of predominant point there. And this goes back to the point that it was either you or Asif or Mitch was making about, I think it was you, Asif, you were saying about the collective actually being the point that's driving everything. Right. Because it's like you act like it seems like, oh, this AI, it's going to help you fulfill your desires, but it's going to interact with you based on a collective point, not based on just you individually. And so this is just evidence to that point. And um, so it's what was the what was the point he said? Like, you don't want it to. Oh, like he was saying, for example, they're going to use this AI in, for example, a country in Africa. And it's like, imagine there's certain cultural things that don't apply there, but they apply here. Hmm. But if the AI only interacts based on certain cultural things, it sort of excludes certain cultures from really having access to it. You know what I mean? Like, imagine when you imagine if hypothetically, every time you try to tell it, hey, find a bathroom nearby, it's like, I don't know what that bathroom is because you're supposed to say the loo. I'm just giving yeah. an example, like a silly one, but 
it, you could take it to a like really broad level of like, oh shit, okay, yeah, like a certain culture may not even be able to interact with this if it has certain biases. Okay, so what does that imply? It's not about your individual shit. It's about the culture you're in. It's about whatever that government says or the laws or whatever. It, that's really what it's going to be programmed to follow and filter. Yeah. And so anyways, his job was really, as far as I can see, to test for those things. And he was he was coming at it from the perspective of the way this is being done. It's, it, it's still not really a, considering enough about all the different cultures and seeing them as all equal or, or whatever. It's, it's, not do, it's not enough to really do this ethically and, and properly. And so he was bringing these points to the Google team about the ethics behind it. Also the points about being aware and so forth and different points. And basically they, they fired him. They just straight up fired him. And he said, you know, it'd be one thing if it was just me, maybe I'm just like a crazy guy or something, whatever he's like, but how come every time one of their AI engineers brings up any ethical points to look at, they never investigate, they just fire them. It's like, this happens every time. And so to me, it's significant because this, what does that show you about the companies that are running the AIs and that are developing them and putting them in all of the stuff that we're going to use? Is they're not I, considering the, uh, go ahead, Drake. Can I add like a point yeah, yeah, for yeah. perspective? It's like what I saw within that was because he mentioned this thing about shaping cultures, right? Mm. How this would shape cultures right. and, how, and basically how some cultures would be in effect eliminated because of uh, the way that this AI would basically be used with everything. And, and it's just like, okay, you're using this AI and because your culture is not included in this, your culture is wiped out and, and then it's shaping. The or other it's just only interacting with you in the way that they want the dominant culture to be impulsed. Right. And so even your children are being impulsed with the new culture rather than it's like, if you right. speak only Spanish right. at home, but the kid goes to school and they speak English and then they end up being American, not like your cultural heritage or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. But okay. But think about that. Cause now, now connect that dot to Ray Dalio. Hmm. What has Ray Dalio been saying lately? America's running out. China's taking over. Yeah. And what is Google? Google's all in bed with China. Mm. Right? They, they, when they go to China, they play by their rules. So now imagine this AI is used to very subtly impulse everybody with fears about certain things and, and attitudes about certain things to make them more susceptible, more, more receptive to like a Chinese type culture. Like, I don't know riding bikes everywhere or wearing masks all the time or listening to the government always completely and, and the authority figures and what they say is the truth and anything else is, is disinformation. Right. Could an not, AI not be behind all of that? Could an AI already be behind all of that? Doing the driving all of that? What are the algorithms that are actually driving all of this information? Because like, think about it. What if literally the pandemic happened and fucking nobody had turned on their smartphones or their TVs? No one would know. People would just be like, oh, I got the flu. It's really bad this year, maybe. Or they would come to their own conclusions. But would we have been wearing masks and all this other shit? And, and I was thinking, too, about because I've interacted with like people in our local government here. And like uh, I met the, the guy who's running for Congress for this um, district or whatever. And like they don't fucking know anything about anything. Like when you ask them about coronavirus, it's just like some kind of standard line. Like, well, we would want to listen to our experts and this, and it's like, oh, so you don't actually, you haven't actually fucking done the research and looked at the point for yourself. And you're not going to stand by that. You know what I mean? They're just going to go, okay, the, the CDC, it's like, imagine it, it's, it's, it's 2023. Okay. And there's new people in government. Right. And they're, they're all conservatives and they're Republicans. Right. And then it's like alert CDC says new, whatever virus is alive or coming to America. And they're like, okay, guys, the CDC says it. Okay, what, what do we need to do? What do we need to impose mask mandates? Do we need to, okay, do we need to help roll out that? Like, they just get, like, even though they talk all this shit about the last few years, they're just going to go with whatever is being impulsed because on CNN, this is all these people are going to die. And everyone's like, oh shit, everyone's going to die. And they're not going to fucking stand because they didn't actually do it in the first place. All they're doing is looking at what their people will say, what they want, what their desire is. And then they repeat it back to them. And then they go into office and they do what they're going to do. And then when it comes down to it, they're, they don't have no principles. So they're not going to stand by, you know what, this, this 
the vaccines don't work or the max don't work or whatever it is, they're just going to fucking go into whatever. And they might try to do it in a, in a kind of more soft way than like maybe New York does, but they're still going to have some kind of thing where you're going to shut down businesses for a week or whatever. They're not going to stand. So I, I wanted to bring up this point earlier, but basically the Google AI is going to be, or going to be implementing what the CIA does already. And, and this is what I was going to say is like, I'm not sure how many people are aware of what the CIA does, but they go into other countries, right? Our CIA goes into other countries, disrupts those countries, makes them unstable, and then inputs whoever they want, who's going to listen to them to start implementing all of their basically like, oh yeah, we, we go along with what America wants. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're going to do deals with America. Drake, that doesn't stuff. happen. That's a conspiracy theory that governments and spy anyway. agencies don't do that. Anyways, did you hear about Ukraine? The problem was Putin <laughs> put one of his guys in charge of the Ukraine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. what they did was they got that guy out and now the guy's not friendly. And that's why all this is happening because you, because Putin's bad. Right, right. Exactly. That's not a conspiracy but theory, also, even though it's just a bunch of conspiratorial stuff. Here's, here's the crazy thing is that nobody looks at how our government does that all around the world and believes that that would never happen here, right? Well, and, and what because it, it, it already does happen here. Operation obviously. <laughs> and not your nightly news and every local news channel all repeats the same lines. Guys, Joe Biden was legitimately elected, okay? Twitter suppressed the story about his son and all that stuff in the Ukraine and all that stuff because of it was hacked, stolen material, even though now we know it wasn't. It was then, but it's not now. Right. Just okay? like so then it was, but now it's not. Was Ellen, and now she's not Ellen. She's Elliot. And, and she never was. She was then, but now she wasn't. And, and you can't bring up you understand? what was. She wasn't now. Because it's not now. In current real time, she wasn't in the past. In the past, she was, but now she wasn't. So Solid. she is, he is a man and he wasn't a woman, but she was a woman, but he wasn't. And he had to get his breasts, her breasts removed from him. He doesn't have breasts. She right. had her breasts removed. He didn't. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so. Exactly. That's that's what the that's exactly what you're saying as far as like oh just sorry Asif had to go he had to get his breasts removed <laughs> just FYI for everybody that was what they ring but, uh, but nowadays they have mobile vans they just come <laughs> to you <laughs> just like when he gets his haircut imagine that <laughs> wow. okay listen to this if if you can mandate that someone gets a vaccine because it's a public health thing. Oh, oh, what was I listening to? Okay. Oh, I, I like where this is going. Oh, no, no, it was so, <laughs> it was so good. Uh, man, what was it? It was a comedian or somebody, and they were talking about um, people identifying as, you know, a man or a woman or whatever. Oh, I think, you know what it was? I think it was um, Kyle Dunnigan. I think it was. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think it was, oh yeah, okay. Have you ever seen his show where he does, does like a show and he's like Sylvester Stallone and all these different characters, right? Oh, he's got a really guy. funny yeah, show. Yeah, I yeah, watch this yeah, yeah. when I'm driving or whatever. Yeah, 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 anyway, yeah. so he 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 uh, he does like these, um, what do you call them, face swaps? But he does it with yeah, like a yeah. celebrity face and then he's really good at doing impressions. So he was doing Sylvester Stallone. It's like one of his recurring characters and he has like a, like a guest or like a sidekick. And he's telling the guy like, you know, um, they're going through, oh, it was going through um celebrities that would look that would look better if they just transitioned so it was like people that were already almost attractive as a woman but they're a man so if they just transitioned it they'd be even hotter right they just like and it was like all these ridiculous things right but then he was saying he was saying that you know people should be able to identify as whatever they want but he also believes that he should be able to identify someone as what he thinks they are that's how they got into the game so like it's not just like what you identify as like, I think you should identify as a woman because that's what I see you as. Right. And I was just thinking about that. Like if, if you can mandate that someone takes a vaccine because of public health, could you mandate that they get transition surgery? Like, Hey, 
your testosterone levels are very low. Yeah. Like, or could you mandate that someone has puberty blockers? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 think about that. Like, hey, population too high right now. We're in the red zone. We need to decrease population. Wow. And so you need to take, that's what they did in Brave New World, right? In Brave New World, it was just like uh, one out of 50 women could have a baby. And everyone else was just basically like, you're sterile. That, that's the way it goes. And you're happy. And when, a woman, when a woman unwel- unwelcomes a child and they pull it out <laughs> piece by piece, just like a fucking bucket of KFC, <laughs> that, my friends, is brave. You're unwelcome here. You're, you know, it's funny because they're protecting their domicile, you know, within their belly. From a foreign just like. Yeah, exactly. I'm a just colonizer. Like a colonizer. <laughs> that is the decolonizing the womb. There you go. They're literally decolonizing the womb, you know? And so it's the same They're literally thing that, removing a colony of cells. It's the same thing you would do here, you know? Like somebody comes in here unwelcome, you remove them forcibly. Unless, of course, they're an immigrant, in which case no immigrants are unwelcome. Only babies that you produced inside your body through a natural process through sex those are unwelcome very much so very it's much your so. body it's your body and it's your, your choice, choice. That's right. it's their body it's not their choice that is brave that's why i call brave new logic mm. yes that's empowering I are feel more empowered. empowered you will be you, empowering you be. cryptocurrency mined from your body <laughs> i'm empowered <laughs> it's like the new empowerment yeah <laughs> the new empowerment is implantable technology that you empower Dude, if you haven't lately look up wally and look oh. up the scene where they're all driving around their little cars and they got like the displays and all this stuff right they should remake wally yeah they should call it uh, the word wall is pretty triggering. Right. <laughs> they should call it back to that. today. But, but like like a like a not a Disney cartoon of it. Like like real life. Like. Oh, that would be cool. Like a like a more like V for Vendetta for V for Vendetta. Oh, that, I forget like, like what happens Wally. <laughs> you know, I feel like they have a movie like this. Uh starts so with like M. Matt. Matt. Ma- Ma- Matrix? Matt Ricks. Matt Ricks. Matrix. Matt Ricks. It's called Matrix. Matt Ricks. Yeah, they should definitely make a movie where everyone's imprisoned inside of a digital universe, like, you know, reality, and robots have taken everything over. That would actually be pretty cool. That's what they should have done for Top Gun. Like, if they, like, people are like, oh, look, it's awesome. It's finally a new, new blockbuster. None of that woke bullshit. And I'm like, do you not realize they're just impulsing you with getting all hyped up about war? <laughs> you fucking retards. <laughs> hey, at least they don't got all that woke bullshit. And I'm like, do you think the system gives a shit if you're woke or not? As long as you support whatever they want you to support. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have a Ukrainian flag on my profile. I'm going to have a picture of Tom Cruise, <laughs> <laughs> a fucking Scientologist. You're sitting there jerking off to a Scientologist glorifying war, acting like at least it ain't woke. And I'm like, if you're saying at least it ain't woke, like that's your baseline, it's just not, it's not woke. Okay, all right. Imagine, yeah. imagine a movie, imagine if they had done Top Gun and it was relevant today to today. And like, literally it's like Tom Cruise, like uh, fighting like Chinese, you know, and like they have AI and all this. Actually, I was reading this book, uh, you know, the Asimov, the iRobot stuff we were reading. Mm-hmm. So we're on the next book, which is called Rest of the Robots. And in this one story in it, all, like these government officials in the US have come together because they like they have an intelligence agent who's, who's figured out that there's only two countries in that in this in the story. There's US and Russia, basically. And the Soviets, the Russians or whoever, they have been they've developed their robotic capabilities so far beyond the u.s for some reason they've been able to get like surpass them by like 25 years basically and they've been able to create humanoids that are like totally indistinguishable from humans 
and even like they have brainwave patterns. So you can't even detect like they could be like having dinner with their family, like they replace an actual human. So you can't even tell who the fuck this person is. Like it's like it's like basically <laughs> this is epic. You're reading this with your five year old son. Right. <laughs> and what's fascinating about it is um, they're trying to because they, they, they've been equipped with some kind of bomb, which like when these when these 10 robots get together, they create a critical mass and they can like destroy like an entire city or something like it's like they said comparing it to the sun is like uh, trivial. Because, you know, we would compare like nuclear bombs to like the sun and all that stuff. They were like, this is so beyond that. And so the point is um, they've got these robots and they're trying to figure out how they can identify if these robots aren't real or whatever, right? So I think that'd be a pretty cool um, movie with Tom Cruise. <laughs> and then Tom Cruise is like, I identify as a robot. Plot twist. That would be the plot twist. That'd be like the climax of movie transitions. Oh, robot. that's the sequel to iRobot. I transpot. <laughs> I robot transitions. It's like it's like you know, like the sequel to the Matrix, like Resurrections or whatever. I robot transitions. And That'll probably really be just the next Matrix. How they're like revolution. Literally, just people trying to become robots. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But then not see, even we're worried about really robots robot. becoming human. Uh huh. We should be worried about humans becoming robots. That's they're, like think about it. happening. Well, I know they're all we're already robots, we're organic robots. But then we're like, you know what? We just need to quit. Like. The See, illusion. We just need to like just go straight robot. Just when, replace all my parts with metal. When I saw that sentient AI thing, that's what I was thinking that they were bringing forth was just like with that headline of, oh, okay, they're getting people to think AI can be sentient so that when they transition into the metaverse, whatever, that they'll feel as if they're still sentient, you know, and or as if they're going to be sentient rather. And then they're just they're like, like, finally, I'll be sentient. Yeah, no, but but seriously, because like, because they're gonna die, they're not gonna exist. But then it'll confuse other people to go, oh wow, wow, look at that, oh wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we need. Yeah, that guy. We need a movie yeah. with Tom Cruise fighting sentient AI, and when he meets one for the first time, Owen Wilson is there. Yes. And his only line in the whole movie is just to go, "You do it." Oh, wow. Yeah, and that's it. <laughs> wow. Or that's like, it's like, he, there's like a scientist. Ex- okay, no, no, it's Tom Cruise. And you know, they have like the, the fighter jets where there's like two seats and one's the navigator. So Luke, yeah. Owen Wilson is the navigator. And then when they're in the scene with the robots and they're like announcing, like they're in the seat and then the Chinese are announcing that their plan is to turn everybody into robots. And then Dr. Fauci is there and he's explaining why. And, and they have the expert and he's like, I've done all the studies. We've done all the research. Robots can't get COVID. And then Luke was, or Owen Wilson goes, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> we got to do it. Pfizer's Fauci upset. Said. So now suddenly Pfizer is on the side of Luke, of Owen Wilson and, uh, and Tom, Cruise. Tom Cruise because they're upset because they- everyone's robots. They won't be able to sell the vaccines. Right, right. But then... But then <laughs> Fauci tells them that robots need oil in order to operate and, and they can just sell them the oil. No, 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 no. Hold on. No, because then you got Saudi Arabia getting in on it. Mm, that's true. Okay, that's that's an angle too. But also what they'll do is they'll like, we'll also brainwash the children robots into being transhuman. <laughs> so that, and then they will identify as human and they'll demand human medical care. And that's how we bring the vaccines back, back in and we reduce the robot population. Wow. Wow. This wow is... or? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. There, there's, you know, they always say not to beat a dead horse. What do they say? Don't beat a dead horse. That's what they but say. I thought it was thing. beat a dead horse. Don't beat a dead horse. But it's like, well, what do you want me to do? Beat it when it's alive? <laughs> like i mean what do you think i am um so anyways you guys want to i think we should end it should here. we transition I think that's, yeah let's that's transition good. so we're going to transition ourselves uh to the next life and uh if you've not yet transitioned 
maybe go back, listen to some of our past podcasts, and maybe you might want to go reach out to some other people, help them to not transition as well. Uh, because you're going to see what happens after we transition. It's just a blank screen, you know? And if, if there's anything, if there's things that we're saying that trigger you or they don't make sense, just identify as intelligent and see how that goes for you. <laughs> all right. That's all. See you guys next time. Ciao, Bye, everybody. I forgot I had to hit stop. Okay, Bye. Cool. Bye, Facebook. Who's, who's doing the live on Facebook? Uh-